Good morning. Good morning. I want to welcome you all to this time of worship, and I'd like to say a special word of welcome to those who are joining us on Facebook Live today. This is the first time that we are streaming on Facebook Live, so it's an adventure. And we are also trying to work on our streaming service through YouTube. So if I seem a little bit out of breath right now, it's because I've been running around working on technology. But you know what? I find that to be very exciting. And I am so thankful that this church has the ability to offer so many options to people for worship right now. So thank you so much for all of the support you are showing to your church family and friends throughout this Advent season. I would like to remind everybody that we do have our parking lot worship services at 6 p.m. on Sunday evenings where we are lighting our super cool giant Advent wreath outside. That has become just a wonderful time of gathering together. It's going to be a little chilly tonight, so I would encourage you to bundle up if you're joining us. And I did also, for those of you who are part of our email system, I have sent out the lyrics to our songs tonight. They'll also be posted on our website, so I encourage you always to go to riverview-virgilumc.org to check out all of the things you need to know for the life and the goings-on of the church. Speaking of our outdoor worship, that is what we plan to do for Christmas Eve as well. So our Christmas Eve worship service will be in the Riverview parking lot at 6 p.m. on December 24th. It's going to be a fabulous service. Our musicians are working hard to prepare things that we can sing together that night as well, and some special music. And we have some special items in store as well. I don't want to ruin a surprise, but there's something fun with lights that everybody is going to be able to do as part of that as well. So I hope that you will all mark that on your calendars for 6 p.m. on Christmas Eve and that you'll bring your friends and your neighbors. We will also live stream that event on Facebook as well. We want to continue to offer as many options as possible. I would also like to remind you that we just recently announced that on Sunday, December 27th, we will not be gathering in person in the sanctuary. Our Dakotas Conference has put together a service called A Very Dakotas Christmas, and it is meant to be something for people to be able to worship from home that day. Several of us may have just gathered with family and friends, and we want to make sure that we are being appropriate during that time. So I'm going to encourage everybody to worship from home, and there will be a link sent out to that worship service. And I'm excited to say that I was asked to be part of that as well. I'm one of the scripture readers, and I also recorded some special music that is prelude for the beginning of that service. It's something that uh, pastors and pastors' families from across North and South Dakota have been asked to participate in. As we move forward into worship, let us center our hearts and our minds on these words. Would you pray with me? Lord of love and light, shine through our darkness, bringing us hope. Open our hearts for the journey, our eyes for the light, our spirits for the peace which you bring. Fill our mouths with laughter and shouts of joy that reveal the love with which you surround us. We offer this prayer in the name of the one who is coming into the world, bringing your hope, peace, joy, and love, Jesus Christ. Amen. One of the beautiful traditions we have during the Advent season is the lighting of our Advent candles. So we have some, some friends who are new to our church. They are not new to me, but some of you may be wondering who these wonderful folks are that are here every Sunday. Marla Starr is my mother, and Tim Almy is her friend. And I'm going to uh, ask you guys to grab this mic over here so you can be heard as well. lit the first two candles, one for hope and one for peace. Today, we light the third candle, the candle of joy. This should be the easy one because joy is all around us, in the children, in the lights, in the music. But how often do we let our preparations or our memories push joy to the side? Joy is like an underground spring that wells up within us, but joy is also a choice. An attitude. Like a muscle, it needs to be exercised. So today we open ourselves to joy, trusting that God has already planted it in us. All we need to do is give it care and offer it to share.
And so we light the candles of hope, peace, and today we light the pink candle for joy. Loving God, we open ourselves to you, trusting that this is how you made us. You created us for joy-filled hearts and lives. Show us the creative power of hope. Teach us the peace that comes from justice. Fill us with the kind of joy that cannot be contained, but must be shared. Prepare our hearts to be transformed by you, that we may walk in the light of Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. And now today, as we prepare to sing, I would like to invite those of you who are wearing masks to sing along with me today. This is not something that we have done in our sanctuary since we've come back inside during this pandemic because it's been proven that singing is a super spreader. But I've seen many choirs be able to sing appropriately when they have masks on. So if you are someone who has a mask on this morning, I would encourage you to sing softly along with me as we enjoy these beautiful carols today. Our first song is Angels We Have Heard on High. enter into our time of prayer. And as we do so, I would like to lift up the following names and situations for us to pray for together. We lift up these names for those who are recovering from surgery, illness, or injury. Jim Quirum, Glenn Jongarius, Dorothy Dubbs, Del Van Voot, Dennis Eggleston, Stu Newharth, Caleb, and Ethan. And we lift prayers for these friends and family members who are battling cancer. Craig Cassie, Arliss Bader, Bev Thomas, Johnny Reimer, Leroy, Cadence, Angela Groon, Jody Gross, Parker Syrie, and Gary Rogers. And we continue to lift families of those who are recently mourning the loss of a loved one. We lift the Zell and McCaskill families and we also lift the minor family. 
And I think it's important to remember during this time of year that this church family has suffered a lot of loss during this last year. I think in my first few months here, I was part of 10 funerals, and that is really devastating for a church. And so as we are coming up on this Christmas, please keep in mind that we have many family members and friends who are facing a Christmas without their loved one for the first time. So I would like to lift special prayers for those families today. Let us now take a moment of silence to lift these prayers and the other joys and concerns that we bring with us today. Let us pray. Lord of light and hope, our minutes and hours can easily get swallowed up in preparation for the coming of Christmas. Forgive us when we so easily get entangled in our own plans and forget to pay attention to the true event. Help us to relax and listen instead of rush and shout. May the songs of the angels, the surprise of the shepherds, and the joy of the Holy Family become part of our preparations and our lives. Open our ears, our eyes, our hearts, and our spirits to again hear the old, old familiar story spoken by new voices in new ways. Remind us again of the joy that the angels shared with the world draped in darkness as the light of the world comes to save us all. Rekindle that joy in our hearts today, and we pray these things in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now let us share in the first two verses of the first Noel. event that many are calling the Christmas star. So I hope that as we gather on the evening of the 20th, many of you will be outside because on the 21st, on that winter solstice, on the darkest night, a light will shine in the darkness as we have some planets that are merging together to just bring forth a very bright, beautiful light in the sky. And during that time, we can think of the wise men and the star that they followed. And now, we have some special music. If some of you were watching the Christmas basket through the Salvation Army, you may recognize this joy medley as one of the songs that Jean and I played together. But I'm so excited this morning that now Beth will be joining us as well. So please enjoy the joy medley.
Today is a really special, exciting day in the life of our family because I did not know that we were going to be able to have a Christmas program this year. And yet, here we are, able to enjoy our children and worship and have them present our message today. So you all get a break from listening to me today, and the children are going to serve as our message as they come forward in an impromptu Christmas pageant. So when I say impromptu, we literally have had no practice. I'm not even quite sure how many kids we have here today. So we are going to be having a lot of fun as we put this together. I have some colored dots that I'm gonna be putting down up here for the kids to be able to know where they are going today. So our Mary and Joseph are gonna to come to our green dots, but now I need to know how many shepherds do we have here today? If you are a shepherd, would you raise your hand really high? One, two, three. Three shepherds, okay. Shepherds, when it's your turn, you're going to come to a yellow dot. How many angels do I have here today? Raise your hands really high. One, two, three. Looks like I've got three angels. Okay, angels, you are going to have purple dots. Teresa, I think there's four. Is there four? Oh, Teresa, no, I'll take that back. You have an angel. She's married. <laughs> Now, let's see who else do I have here today? We've got angels, we've got shepherds, we've got Mary and Joseph. I think we need some wise men or some wise people. How many wise men do I have here today? I've got one wise man. You are going to be the smartest person here today. That is awesome. Let's see. I'm going to have you stand on a red dot. All right, now do we have any animals or anything else like that that I need to think about today? And if there are any other kids out there who decided that maybe they didn't want to be part of it, but they decide at the last second, you are all welcome to join us up here. And at the end of our time together up here, while the kids are still standing in their nativity pose, we are going to sing away in a major all together. Now today, for our scripture, I am going to be reading from our Celebrate Wonder Storybook Bible, which is what I have been using for our children's virtual Sunday school online. Our story starts in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 1, verses 26 through 38, Mary's Joy. Mary lived in the town of Nazareth. Mary was engaged to Mary Joseph, a builder whose family lived in Bethlehem. One day, an angel appeared to Mary. At first, Mary was scared, but the angel Gabriel spoke to her, saying, Don't be afraid, Mary. God is pleased with you. I have come to tell you good news. God is going to send you a baby boy. You will name him Jesus. He is God's son, and he will show everyone how to love God and each other. Mary listened closely, and her heart was filled with joy. I am a servant of God. I will do what God wants me to do, Mary said. And so it is appropriate that today we lit our candle of joy. Mary and Joseph, would you please come stand on your green dots? And baby Jesus, of course. Jesus brings joy. Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through 7. The man in power, the emperor Caesar Augustus, wanted everyone to go to their hometowns to be counted. Joseph was from Bethlehem, so he and Mary had to go to Bethlehem. It was a hard trip, walking from Nazareth all the way to Bethlehem, and Mary was going to have her baby very soon. 
Bethlehem was very crowded and busy when they arrived. That night, baby Jesus was born. Mary wrapped him in a cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the guest room. Joyous news, Luke chapter 2, verses 8 through 20. In the fields around Bethlehem, shepherds were watching their sheep. It was dark and cold, and they were warming themselves by a fire. Shepherds, would you come forward? And our shepherds are bringing sheep with them. Wonderful. <laughs> Suddenly, an angel appeared. Angels, it's time for you to join us as well. Look at our beautiful angels today. And it's okay if angels need helpers. <laughs> So as we were saying, suddenly our angels appeared. The angels said, do not be afraid. Today in Bethlehem, a baby was born for everyone. The baby is God's son. The baby's name is Jesus. You will find him lying in a manger. And the shepherds said, let's go to Bethlehem and see this special baby. The shepherds found Mary and Joseph and baby Jesus. They told everyone they saw, about the new baby. The shepherds praised God for letting them see the special baby Jesus. The Magi, Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. In a faraway place, there were Magi who spent their time watching the stars. One night, they noticed a very special star in the sky. It was very bright and seemed to be moving ahead of them. The Magi thought this special star would lead them to the new king. I think we need our very, very smart wise man to come join us now. <laughs> Welcome, Mr. Wise Man. Wonderful. <laughs> the wise men wanted to bring special gifts, as we see here, to the new king. They packed frankincense, gold, and myrrh, gifts fit for a king, and set out following the star. The Magi arrived in Bethlehem following the special star until it stopped over a little house. When the Magi entered the house, they met the new king, Jesus, and his mom, Mary. The Magi knelt down and offered Jesus their gifts. Here ends the reading of our Holy Gospel. May it light our way during this Christmas season. Can we thank these children for participating in this story today? And now, let us join together. Kids, I'd like you to stay up here while we sing Away in a Manger. If you guys want to sing too, you can. Since I'm going to sing and I'm up here with you, I'm going to put my mask on. But I would encourage all of you to join with us in this beloved carol, Away in a Manger.
I want to thank you guys so much for bringing the Christmas story to life for us today. And now you may go back and sit with your moms and dads, grandpas and grandmas, aunts and uncles. this opportunity to share together with you this morning and to those who are joining us on Facebook Live. And just a reminder that this service is being recorded and it will be available by video later as well. You can go onto our church's website to view it. We'll put it on Facebook. You can share it with all your friends and family members as we spread joy and light the darkness during this Christmas season. At this time, I would like to invite those of you who have brought your tithes and your gifts with you this morning to come forward as our special music is played to place your gifts in our offering plates throughout the sanctuary. Would you pray with me as we bless these gifts? Generous God, your love renews us and restores our strength with gratitude. We offer you a portion of what you have given to us. Receive our gifts, our prayers, and our service that your church may become a source of hope for the world. Amen. And now as we lit the candle of joy today, it seems only appropriate that we should join together in singing Joy to the World. Would you like to stand and join me in singing this beautiful carol together? Yeah. 
thank all of you online and gathered together for joining me in this worship experience together today. And now please accept this blessing. Joy has come, for the Lord has come. Be open to its simple beauty. Be prepared to sing it in your heart. Be ready to receive the King born in a manger, the Savior who brings joy to the world. Go in peace. Amen. Pastor Yes, ma'am. Excuse me, but I need Keith to come forward. We have a little presentation. <laughs> I'm going to ask you to grab the microphone since we are still live so that all those can hear. Yes. Well, it is with joy and happiness that I am here in behalf of all of you to give a very special thank you to a wonderful custodian, Keith. And um, if you aren't all aware that he will be retiring this position at the end of the year. But we really want to say thank you for your, your loving hands and the care that you have given to this church. And um, we know that you might be retiring as a custodian, but we know that you are here as a dedicated, you know, loving church member who will continue your spiritual leadership and also your active hands in giving service to this church. So God bless you, and we give you thanks. Thank you, Keith. I just want to thank everybody for the chance and the opportunity uh, to serve you that I have for these last two years. And I don't know who is taking my place yet, but I am willing to hang on as long as it takes to show the person the ropes and how to run this church. It's a lot of work and everything, but when you do it on to the glory of the Lord, he gives you strength. Uh, I don't want to say too much more, but... I was very grieved in my spirit this morning when Pastor Teresa kind of spoke in her words that she's very grieved and very heavy downhearted. It's a tough thing she mentioned this morning about having 10 funerals. It's not easy to come into a church with a family that's a lot of disputes and stuff like that. So. Um, we have to stand strong. And I thought of the one scripture there when uh, God's army was, was going out after the enemy and we had too many people. And it thinned out and the Lord said, whoever laps up from the water, uh, pick those people, send the other people home. So in a way, if you look out and around, we are thinned out a little bit. That means God's strong in the ones that have been chosen to hang on. So with that, I just want to say, and I kind of want to, because of uh, the distance and everything with, with COVID, I want everybody to raise their hand. Well, put your hands towards Pastor Teresa, and we're going to lift up and we're going to pray for our pastor. Heavenly Father, we just come before you. Lord, that you've chosen her to come and be the leader of this church. We ask you to stand, and we ask you to be supportive of her, and anything that she needs, don't wait for her to ask, but suggest and do the weather. But as long as we can, we ask you to support her in the things that she's doing and that the COVID will be cured in the, in the time. We thank God for the vaccination, for the vaccine, and so on. Keep her strong and never give up hope in her doing. And we just ask you these things in your mighty precious name. Amen. 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 That was a beautiful prayer and blessing. Thank you so much, Keith. You have a true servant's heart. Thank you so much, everyone, and Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas.